Two point source interference patterns, if you've got two waves and they end up at the same point, like these two waves here, they'd add up to make like a super wave and a super trough. And we call it constructive interference. Likewise, if we had a wave that gets to the same point as a wave that's 180 degrees out of phase or pi radians out of phase or you could just say shifted by half a wavelength, you get destructive interference. Okay, that's two ways that we've talked about things <coughs> in the past. We talked about that kind of interference as it related to sound waves. We talked about how it related to interference in terms of beats. So we're going to extend these ideas in general to waves. And I'd also like to talk about uh, the idea that they may relate to light waves. All right, so here's the, the way I'd like to draw this. I like to use dotted lines. And you don't have to draw this yet. I just want to explain. I want to use dotted lines for the troughs. That's the low parts. And I'd like to use solid lines for the peaks, that's the high parts, and I'd like to draw a two-dimensional interference pattern due to two point sources for a wave from an <coughs> overhead view, like looking down on it, kind of like ripples on a pond, okay? And I can show you a, a, an applet of that in a little bit. I've got a link to, on my website, but I want to talk about it in, on paper first, okay? And what, we'll use our imaginations for now, and then we'll look at either an applet, or we could do it in water, too. So I'm going to choose two point sources. And you can imagine that these two point sources might be wave emitters. Okay? We've got two wave emitters. And I'm going to choose two different colors. I'm going to use purple and I guess I'll use uh, maybe I'll use green. But this point source here, let's call it source 1, could radiate out a wave. And I'm going to try and keep my spacing equidistant. So here's my peak. And it's going to be semicircular. You know, like if you had a point source that's bobbing up and down at the edge of a bathtub, making ripples outwards, you'd expect a semicircular ripple effect to come out from the edge of your bathtub. If you had like a pencil or something bobbing up and down at the edge of the tub. And the next wave is going to be an equal spacing away. The reason I'm making an equal spacing away is because the wavelength isn't changing. I'm going to ask you to draw this along with me, okay? If you don't happen to have two colors, I mean, that's your loss, but it'll be more uh, easy to see if you do it with two colors, possibly. Okay, remember, this is hand-drawn, so the semicircles may not be perfect. They're not. As much as you can fit on your page. That's what I'm going to try and do. Okay, so I've got all of these semicircular circular ripples. The wavelength shouldn't be getting any longer. I'm, I'm making a couple of mistakes here. I'm trying to compensate for it as I go. All right, I'm going to go it as far as that. So I've gotten to the edge of my page on the one side. And I would like to do the same thing for the other point source. And so you figure if one point source was rippling by itself, it would make a pattern like this. But we always talk about wave superposition. So we're going to have another point source that's producing ripples. And these other, this other point source producing ripples would have something like this happening. Should we draw off the side of it? Or should it be yeah, side by side, just like I'm doing it. And let's try and keep the spacing in between the lines in these semicircles the same for both drawings, okay? So we're, we're going to make this be a scenario, in other words, where we're looking at these two ripples, these semicircular ripples, where the ripples themselves have the same wavelength, which means that whatever these two things are that are making the ripples must be producing a vibration of some sort that's got the same frequency. Assuming that the ripples are happening in the same medium, uh, which makes sense since they're side by side. 
so hard, so technically demanding. It's like an art attack. It's a fun show. Uh, no, you could probably find it on YouTube. Art attack. 50 pounds of glitter and 100 tennis balls. You can make like a Picasso painting. I love it. Okay, so it starts to look pretty overwhelming. My picture is nowhere near as good as that. It's okay. It's not an art class. So here's what I'd like to propose. If the dotted lines represent represent the troughs, okay, and the solid lines represent the peaks, that is the minima and the maxima. What happens when a, a trough Overlaps with a trough. Creates super trough. Super trough. What happens when a peak overlaps with a peak? What happens when a trough overlaps with a peak? Uh, flat. Destructive, yeah, flat. Okay. So here's what I want to do. I want to find all the spots where a trough intersects with a trough. Or a peak intersects with a peak. And I'm going to put a dot there. Here's a trough, trough, peak, peak, trough, trough, peak, peak, trough, trough, peak, peak, trough, trough, peak, peak. Okay. Peak, peak, trough, trough, peak, peak, trough, trough, peak, peak, trough, trough, peak, peak, trough, trough, peak, peak. I'm going to keep on doing that, but I'm not going to use the words. And you start to develop a little bit of a pattern. And depending on how well you've drawn it, now I haven't drawn mine perfectly, but depending on how well you've drawn it, the pattern e is either more apparent or less apparent. Where the peaks and peaks overlap to make super peaks, and where the troughs and the troughs overlap to make super troughs. In other words, in the constructive, re constructive interference points. Yeah, this, this isn't just a coloring contest. I have a reason for, for where I'm putting these guys. Peak-to-peak -peak interference and trough-to-trough -trough interference is my reasoning. <coughs> and constructive interference is my game. <coughs> where the peaks and the peaks over, where the uh, trough and the trough, or the peak and the peaks overlap. Okay. All right, now this is a little bit of a thought experiment. To, like I say, because this isn't a real ripple tank, this is just a drawing of two point sources for semicircular ripples. But you've seen a semicircular ripple because we've all played in the tub. Or you've dropped pebbles at the beach. Or you can imagine somebody playing at the pub, at the pub, at the club, at, in the tub. <laughs> I guess you can do this in the pub with a pencil on the side of a glass. Anyway, uh, we're talking about the tub. Dipping a pencil in and out of the tub or your finger in and out of the side of the tub, you get these semicircular ripples. And if you did it side by side, you might not notice it at first, but you would get this kind of an interference. And it only stands to reason that you would. Now, what you'd notice if you were to look at the other side of the tub, and I want to highlight this, and I'll do it in red. I'm going to follow this, these paths. Can you see that they're kind of lined up? And that's not an accident. And depending on how well we've lined these, we've drawn our pictures, the symmetry is either better or worse. And what you would find if you looked at the opposite side of the bathtub, if these were your fingers, two fingers, dip, dip, dipping in the water at the same frequency, because my, both my fingers are attached to the same hand, dip, 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 dip in the water. If you watch carefully, what you'd notice is, isn't this line a line of constructive interference? I think so. What you notice is that you'd get a, I'm going to sort of draw a picture of what you might see at one moment. At one moment in time, you'd see a really high splash up on the side at that point. There'd be sort of a dead spot there because there's destructive interference. It must be destructive interference because I've got troughs overlapping with peaks. You can see that if you go back and look at what's happening in between the 
peak peak and the trough trough interactions. So you'd get what looks like bands of constructive interference trailing out the sides where these peak peak and trough trough overlaps happen. Constructive interference pattern would be, if you like, it would kind of be like having this projected onto the other side of the bathtub, splashing up on the other side of the bathtub. You'd have these constructive bands and destructive bands periodically showing up on that side of the bathtub. Make sense? Okay, so that, that's if you're playing in the bathtub. And again, I'll show you an applet in a few minutes.